Today we're going to be talking about an issue that's going to impact many important and many future elections in America. So just to be clear, Republican voters are dwindling and the Republican Party is losing voters. Um, it's not the fact that they're also losing voters, they're also not gaining any either. When it comes to demographic shifts across the country, these type of voters, minority voters especially, are the first ones not to vote for Republicans, and that's not good news. With America becoming, or known as a melting pot across the United States, sorry, across the world actually, um, it's not good news for Republicans because the only voting base that they actually have won back in 2016, back in 2012, back in 2008 was the white voting group. And let's go over and look at the 2016 voting base. The only part that Donald Trump carried handedly was the white voters, and they made up for 70 percent of the national voters, and he won 57 to 37 percent, meaning Hillary Clinton still got 37 percent of the white vote compared to other voting groups where Donald Trump did not even reach 37 percent in any other vote voting group and he only got above 37 percent in the white voting group yes they are the majority but they're not going to be for a long time um well, in a long time, they're not going to be the majority, and that's not good news for Republicans because Democrats are improving amongst white voters, but Donald Trump didn't really improve that much amongst African-American voters. Hillary Clinton carried 89% of African-American voters, and Trump carried 8%. Back in 2012, Mitt Romney only carried 6%, but it's a 2% increase, and that's not good enough to win future elections, especially since Trump is expecting a 20-30% shift amongst African-American voters, which just isn't possible. We go over to Hispanic voters, one of his lacking voting groups. Mitt Romney, again, outperformed by Donald Trump, but that's not necessarily the best thing. Barack Obama handedly won the 2012 election against almost all odds. Almost everyone expected it to be an extremely close race. Barack Obama was able to carry it with 332 electoral votes, where Donald Trump only carried 306. And I'm not trying to uh, understate or divert attention away from where Donald Trump won, because he did do a phenomenal election performance. He won in almost every single swing state. But again, he still didn't win a super majority. He didn't win an electoral college landslide. He didn't win the biggest since Reagan. And when we're looking at the voting numbers, this is not good news for Republicans. The only voting group that they appeal to is white voters. And with growing a growing number of African-American, Latino, um, Asian voters, this is not good news for the Republicans. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these uh, articles that I found about the state of Texas. And the reason why I'm focusing on the state of Texas, um, I'll actually tell you in just a moment. So the headline is Texas Hispanics behind half of states growth since 2010. If we take a look at the uh, growth in population amongst minority groups, we see that Asian voters took the lead with 35.5% of a change, and then African American voters at 13.8%, Hispanic voters at 15 and white voters at 3.9%. Keeping the trend, Hispanic voters, uh, well, minority voters in general, will likely take um, a clear advantage when it comes to the electorate in the state of Texas eventually. The white voters are clearly in the majority, but it doesn't mean that they're going to stay in the majority for a long time. With a 3.9% growth compared to 35.5% or 15 or 13.8%, that is not good news for white voters or Republicans. White voters are going to have less of an impact, meaning candidates are going to be not focusing on them enough. Yes, they are the majority that comes out and votes, but with an angered electorate against the president in minority populations, we're not going to see these type of turnout numbers that had such a suppressed turnout amongst minority voters. We're probably not going to see 70% of the electorate be white in 20, the 2018 midterms or the 2020 election just based off how angry these people are because of the president. We'll likely see maybe 50 to 60% but these margins are not going to be as great as they were in 2016. Almost everyone expected a Hillary Clinton victory. Yes, that did add to her defeat because a lot of people wondered, why should I vote if she's already going to win? If I didn't agree with her in the primaries, why am I going to suck it up and vote for her in the general election? 2016 rolled around, Trump won, and not only did it corral Bernie and Clinton supporters together, it excited the entire electorate, both on the Republican and Democratic side. However, when it comes to the number of voters that are on the Republican side, they are typically white older men. And the fact that I'm mentioning older groups, if we look at how the groups voted back in 2016, Donald Trump won over 65 and older, but Hillary Clinton still got 45% of the vote. When we see the argument comparing our age group from 18 to 29 to 65 and older, people say people will become more conservative as they age. And people are arguing that Generation Z is probably going to mean the most conservative. Number one, that study was taken completely out of context, and it was used to... Um, 
bring attention away or divert attention away from the changing demographics and the anti-Republican uh, message that's been working amongst younger voters and minority voters. And I really do not see Generation Z coming in and becoming a new Republican stronghold because that's not what it's going to be. I mean, it's just not how things are. You're not going to bring in a generation after millennials that pretty much know nothing about politics as of today and already assume that they're becoming more conservative. You cannot say my generation, which is pretty much uninformed about everything, could knows how to say whether or not they're conservative or, or liberal yet. I mean, a lot of people are going to take stances on whether or not the women's march or gun control, but they're not going to be clear enough to make a decision unless they are informed about policies. And that's not what our generation is ready for. It was never ready for that. And that study does not make any sense considering how our generation, my generation has been. But uh, that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the Republican Party. But they shouldn't really expect my generation to come and save them and bring them out of a ditch that they're already in because they've only been appealing to white older voters for a very long time. And for a while, that's helped them win. But right now, it's not helping them win. Uh, with 2018 coming around, we're going to see a huge number of minority voters, again, not white voters, minority voters, and that's not going to be good news when it comes to Republicans. Again, looking at these numbers, the only voting group Trump won was white voters. Yes, they made 70% of the electorate, but Hillary Clinton still got 37% of the white vote, whereas Trump only got 8% of the African American vote or 28% of the Hispanic vote. He didn't reach Hillary Clinton's numbers amongst white voters in any of the other voting groups. And he lost them pretty handedly, and that's not good news for him either. When we're looking at the younger voting groups, these generations are probably not going to become more conservative, or if they do, it'll be by 2 to 3%. And even if they do become more conservative, again, Hillary Clinton won 45% of the 65 and over voters, and Trump only got 7% more than her. If this is the voting group that Republicans are lying, relying on and waiting for to come out and vote for them, they're not going to get it. Because if we look at the voting numbers, Hillary Clinton losing an election handedly to Donald Trump still was able to carry a number of these voters and won in every voting group except for 45 to 64 and 65 and older. The older voting group did not vote for her, but Trump didn't win it by such a large margin either. And when we look at the voting groups in the minority areas, where my, not typical minority areas, I mean in the smaller areas, 19% of the electorate was 18 to 29 25% was 30 to 44. So clearly the majority is in the Trump areas where he was able to win. But again, Hillary Clinton got a clear number uh, of voters from a, a clear number or percentage of these voters in her column. And that's what boosted up her population wise, uh, her popular vote um, total. But when we look at the income, we don't see the type of um, desperation amongst voters we don't see them drastically going for one candidate because something was promised we see a pretty much evened out level uh leveled playing field when it comes to one hundred thousand dollars or over of uh, annual income i'm actually surprised by this hillary clinton did pretty well here she tied with donald trump and the message that republicans are only elite and rich voting groups it resonates with some voters it resonates it doesn't resonate with a number of others but it doesn't really make sense at this point, but when we're looking at this area, which typically defines the white working class, the areas of Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, Trump did pretty well here compared to the other, other voting groups. He tied with her in one. He lost her in one. This is the only voting group he won, which was only 30% of the electorate, but he still was able to be competitive in the number of others in order to win in these areas, and especially since the income of less than $50,000 a year. That was mainly in urban areas, which he already knew he was going to lose. And then if we just look in the union household, um, Hillary Clinton actually did better than Donald Trump, which was pretty surprising. Um, people are ger generally stereotyping the union as the white working class and all going for Trump, but not really. His approval rating amongst unions, union households has gone up, but it's not enough to make an impact on the 2018 midterms or the 2020 general election or in the Republican Party in general. Trump was one that was that one candidate who could actually win in the Rust Belt that nobody really expected. And now we're going to go back to the state of Texas. So the reason why I'm talk I talked about Texas for a while is because this is the one state that I could actually impact every election in the future. Other states such as Florida or the Rust Belt, yes, they can impact other elections, but Texas is going to be the decider factor in a number of future elections when we go to the 2024 election if democrats are able to take texas republicans can win in the rust belt they can win in ohio they can win in iowa they can win in arizona they can win in florida they can win in north carolina they can win in georgia but if they lose texas they lose the election and that's mainly because hispanic voters are going to come out and vote and that's something that you can't say won't happen because of the fact that we've seen it in 2017 special elections um some 2017 2018 primaries in, in texas alone and the overall excitement against or for the president and 
when we're looking at a state like Texas, if Texas goes, we know states like Florida are probably going to go, or Arizona is probably going to go, or the Rust Belt is probably going to flip back if states like this are going. And it's going to start a chain reaction and a new formed Democratic Party focusing on these states, and the Republican Party is going to dwindle out because the voting groups that they need to appeal to are congregating around rural, around rural areas or in areas that are already heavily Democratic that they have no chance of flipping over. Texas went for Donald Trump by around 8 to 9 percent. I believe it's 9 percent. Um, back in 2016, um, or maybe it was 8%. It doesn't really matter at this point. Just know that he didn't win by such a large margin that he was expected to. And that's not good news. He's losing in these voters. He lost, he almost lost um, in the Rust Belt. He was able to carry the Rust Belt. But if the Rust Belt's turning red and Georgia, North Carolina, Florida, Arizona, Texas are all turning blue, we're going to start to see a new type of wave. And again, Republicans could hold on to the Rust Belt. That's not needed for the Democrats anymore. Yes, they will probably still pay attention to it, but the Republican Party has a hold on these white voters, and that's something that they're going to have for a long time. But they're going to need to start changing their platform in order to appeal to minority voters, which they're probably not going to do. When we look at the demographic change, it's going to be so sudden and so sw swift that if we look, first of all, if you look at the composition composition of Republican voters in the House of Representatives, they are mainly white. Or if you go into the Senate, they are mainly white. Whereas the Democratic Party, yes, still mainly white, has a lot of uh, diversity in their terms of uh, representatives. Or if we look at the Trump White House, that's a clear example of what people stereotype the Republican Party as. And it's not good for the Republicans. They're losing with women. They're losing, they're starting to lose more white voters. They're already lost with every single minority group. So their voting groups are starting to dwindle out and they're going to start to need to appeal to these minority voters. And the Democratic Party already has its grip clenched on all of these minority voters that it's going to be extremely hard to see how Republicans do have a possibility at winning in future elections. And looking at the 2024 outlook or the 2028 outlook states such as south carolina or georgia or north north carolina are all becoming more democratic just based off african-american voters i'm not saying south carolina will turn blue i'm not saying north carolina will turn blue i'm not saying georgia will turn blue but they all have a possibility of flipping from the republican column if you look back in 2016 the state of missouri voted more republican than south carolina yet south carolina is much more of a republican stronghold or stereotyped as much more of one but we're seeing demographic changes we're seeing a growth of of African American voters in key states in the South, and their votes are going to matter a lot more. And when let's go ahead and take a look at the 2012 election again. Mitt Romney did not win any of these voting groups except for the white voters. He won 20% over Barack Obama. Hillary Clinton won 20. Sorry, um, Donald Trump won 20% over Hillary Clinton back in 2016. So Mitt Romney actually carried more white voters than Donald Trump, and white voters made up more of the electorate back in 2012. He had, Barack Obama was able to win over the presidency um, pretty handedly, and if we go back to 2008, 74% of the electorate was white voters, and then we go back to the 2000 race, 81% of voters were white. We go down to 1992, and let's look at the group voting. Um, it should be around the same margins, but 87% of the electorate was white. We go to 2000. Keep that in mind. 81%. Okay, pretty good for Republicans. Then we go to 2008, 74%, 72%, 70%. We are seeing a decline in white voters, or we're seeing an upgrade, uh, not an upgrade, uh, in, in an increase of African American, Hispanic, Asian, and other minority groups in their turnout. And it could be a combination of both. It actually is a combination of both. And that's not good news for Republicans. If this number dwindles, they can win it. But they probably won't win any future elections. If they lose Texas, they lose. They can win the Rust Belt. They can run up the map when it comes to a number of these toss-up states, okay? They can win in Arizona. If they lose Texas, they lose the election. Um, and then, God forbid for Republicans that Democrats are able to win in the Rust Belt. It will be an absolute victory for Democrats in a number of these states. If they're able to win in Texas, they're probably winning over in Arizona or over in Georgia or over in Florida or even Ohio and Iowa. The possibilities are endless for the Democratic Party because they are expanding on their voting groups and more voters that are going to vote for them are coming into the country or are registering to vote or who are already in the country and coming out to vote after being registered to vote for a long time. Whereas Republicans are losing, they're losing their white voters, they're losing their older voters, they're not doing well with the president they have right now. And 2018 is probably going to be a big shock for Republicans, the ones that believe that Donald Trump is going to help them win in the 2018 midterms. Sure, maybe he'll help you a little bit, but keep in mind, Republicans are not going to gain any seats, maybe in the Senate, but probably none in the House, um, unless it's a redistricted map, such as in Pennsylvania, but 
Republicans probably aren't going to win drastic margins. They're not going to have a net gain more than a net gain the Democrats have. And that's going to be a shocker for a number of Republicans. And then 2020 will roll around. Maybe Trump will win. Maybe he won't. But 2024, 2028, 2032, bloodbaths for Republicans because of shifting demographics. Number one, party fatigue will kick in. Um, midterm elections will matter a lot more, and people are going to come out and vote. If an eight-year Trump presidency, being completely honest, the Democrats should probably want an eight-year Trump presidency, not for the case of the Supreme Court, but for the case of midterms, for the case of excitement amongst voters against the president. But keep in mind, Trump has already done enough damage to the Republican Party and enough help to the Republican Party. He helped them back in 2016, but right now I don't think he's on a good track for helping the Republican Party just yet. He does have a clear possibility of helping them in 2020, but 2018 is probably a lost cause, and he could help rebuild the Republican Party into a new Trump-style party, which could definitely help him with a number of voters. But the Republican Party right now is so hooked on that Paul Ryan, Mitt Romney, um, yeah, uh, the Kentucky senator, I forgot his name, oh, Mitch McConnell. Um, uh, those type of people that are running the Republican Party are the reasons why the Republican Party is going to dwindle out eventually and why they need to vote, they need to gain new voters, and why their voting bases are pretty much dwindling out again. So thank you guys for watching this video. I apologize for it being so long. I'll probably go live uh, pretty soon, probably not today, but in a couple days. But um, again, thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I'll see you all tomorrow.